Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Marriage, Ministry, Motherhood. I am your host, Tamara V. Lawrence, and I am so happy that you're here to join with me as we delve into another area of marriage, ministry, motherhood. This week, we're going to continue with ministry. Last week, we looked at... Um, how to handle rejection and we found out that there are many ways of being rejected but this week we're actually going to look at preparation for ministry yes and I have found there are seven areas to prepare ourselves some physical some mental spiritual because there are different areas involved in ministry and before we go any further, I ask you to like this video, to place a comment um, so we can have a conversation and to subscribe so that you can have much more to come. Um, this November, we're going to look at ministry next month, December for me, um, you know, February is the season of love, um, December when we when we celebrate a period that we want to say this is when Jesus was born, though we may not believe he was born in December, for me, just the fact that we're celebrating something and God is love. Jesus, the son of God, is love. And if we're saying he was born then, then I want to celebrate that entire month being the month of love. So we're going to look at marriage in December. But as I go into the topic, I would like us to think of, I know we've all heard of Ephesians and um, Corinthians when Paul lists ministries and there were some pastors, there were some teachers, there were some prophets, apostles, and you know, he, he lists quite a few. And in Ephesians, he gave the reason for these spiritual gifts. It's not so we could go make some big money and build big houses, but he actually gave three reasons for these spiritual gifts. He said, one, they were for the for perfecting the saints. Yeah. Two, he said they were for the work of the ministry. And three, they were for the edifying of the body of Christ. So when the Lord gives us a spiritual gift, it's not for ourselves. It's for the body of Christ to be better. Yeah. Um, and I have found from experience seven areas in which we need to be prepared for ministry. And the first one I have is that if you're going to get involved in ministry, you need to develop a friendship with God. <laughs> you know, last week, as we look at some of the ways that we get rejected, if you don't have a deep friendship with God, you're going to be so discouraged, so distressed, because what you'll find is that um, your friendship with God is what will keep you going. It's what will cause you to be that Bible that others read that will make them excited. Because honestly, depending on where you go, you will be the only Bible that some people get to read. You'll be the only Jesus they see. And the friendship that you have with God, you know, show me your company and tell me who you are. If you're in good company with Christ, then... Um, the people will see Christ in you. So the first thing you need to do before you get up and go out there is to have a good relationship. Jesus need to be your friend. Yes. And the second thing I have here is in preparing for ministry, don't wait to be perfect to get up and go out there. How do you prepare for that one? It's this... Oh, I don't know the Bible enough. Oh, I don't know prophecy enough. Oh, um, well, there's this one little thing that I need to do. I need to build a house. I need to do this. Don't wait to have it perfectly together. The only thing you need to have perfectly together 
is the your relationship with God and he will teach you everything that you need because just so you know who the Lord calls he qualifies so you think oh I need to go off and I need to go to Bible school and I need to go do my ministry and in my, my masters in divinity and I need to go God will qualify you and I'll share a little joke there's this one missionary um, who used to tell us that she was there way before us she said listen as a teacher you just need to stay one page ahead of the students just one page ahead so when they ask you questions you know if they ask you something about the chapter to come tell them to wait you know and that's a little joke but as we learned and as we grew it was something that at the beginning came in handy just trying to stay a page ahead and you might think oh you need to do a whole chapter you have so much to do you can just about stay a page ahead of them and for me i was teaching food and nutrition and home management and and sometimes even science science can you believe that all these things i'm a journalist i am not a science teacher a home ec teacher so i need to be reading this textbook so i can prepare my students um so staying a page ahead helped me a lot so second point do not wait to be perfect God will make you perfect. You know, but it says, be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That perfection is the knowing when to confess your sins and to repent of them, leave them all to God. You know, it's, it's, pre, it's Christian maturity. That's all you need to go out there. And my third point, be willing to be led. Hmm, some of the biggest problems we had being out there in ministry, well, and even, even, yeah, one of the biggest problems we had wa um, was with the, the missionaries who came. Everybody had their own agenda. Everybody had their own this, and you, you find that you would really struggle with the volunteers that come in sometimes because everybody's big and we're not paying them. They came to work for God, not for us and stuff. And even for us, you know, maybe I'm sure we probably had that same problem when we went in. Um, so don't make life hard for the leaders that you go to work with. Be willing to be led yeah because it makes life easier for the the people who are leading out they need your help not your fight against them because what they're doing is already really hard and the fourth one is to have no expectations when we were told that when we first arrived we did not even we did not understand the magnitude of that do not expect anything yeah don't go oh lord i'm hoping that you will change me lord i'm hoping that you will this I'm, I'm hoping that you'll have absolutely no expectations go with the lord you've sent me here and i'm going to do everything to the best of my ability and i am going to let you use me for your glory that's it yeah don't have any expectations because you'll find them all get shattered in a moment and you're disheartened and you want to pack up and go home so don't don't go expecting anything in any way don't expect perfection from the missionaries don't expect the water to be nice and pure don't don't expect anything if the lord send you he'll look after you and say boy jesus why are you giving me brown coca-cola looking water to drink and I'm saying that because in Guyana it's like that. And actually there was a missionary, not from our school, but from somewhere else that left the very next day because the water was not pure color like they got from their own tap back home. Yeah. So that's one. That's number four. So, so far we looked at developing a friendship with God, not waiting to be perfect, 
being willing to be led and having no expectations. So um, point number five is to have no plans of your own. Don't go with the within one year, I'm hoping to baptize 15. And within one year, I'm hoping that this will happen and I want to build this and build that. Go. And with the willingness to be led, submit to God. And whoever the leader is, working with them, sharing some ideas, helping to develop what they have. Especially for those who are planning only to go for a year. Yeah, you're going for a year and you have all these huge plans of what you're going to achieve and what you're hoping to accomplish. Yes, it's good to have some personal goals. Yeah, but in terms of the project, it takes so long sometimes to actually get to understand the people and who they are and the difficulties sometimes that come um, with um, handling villages and communities and wherever it is. So even if you go with some ideas, um, go and, and present them, but don't expect to, oh, I expect this to be done. Oh, these people over here, they're, they're suffering, they're struggling, and I want us to do this and that. Because it's not because the people who are there before you are not doing anything. Trust me, that's not why you come and you see all these things. Um, it, it usually goes deeper than that. So the fifth thing I suggest is to have no plans really of your own for the projects that you're gonna go and push. Yeah, and number six, cultivate the fruit of the spirit. Go find the fruit of the spirit in the Bible, the love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, faith. Oh, and make sure that you are the tree bearing every single one of those fruits that's mentioned that makes up this whole fruit of the spirit. You will need every single one of them oozing out of you for you to be effective, for you to be easily worked with, for you to easily work with anybody um, in there. You really need it to just to handle everything that's gonna come. You really need to cultivate the fruit of the spirit. And the final one I have is, Paul says to esteem others higher than yourselves. Make that become you. And I guess in cultivating the fruit of the spirit, maybe it'll come easy, um, um, a lot easier, that you truly learn to see everybody higher than yourselves. And when you do that, you'll be you'll be kinder, you'll be more respectful, you'll be nicer, because you don't go thinking, oh, I've got it all together, and I'm coming from here that I'm coming from this, you know, country that oh, we have this and that and all that kind of stuff, it, you'll find that you end up looking down on others. Um, but when you get involved in ministry, be it ministry within your church, ministry um, within a community, ministry far away like we did, you really need to esteem others higher than yourselves. So um, look to develop a friendship with God. Don't wait to be perfect. Be willing to be led. Have no expectations. Have no plans of your own. Cultivate the fruit of the spirit. And the seventh one is to esteem others more highly than you esteem yourself. And of course, there's so much more that I could go in into with this one, but I will have it written and it'll be on our blog at missionaryforlife.org. But if you're really thinking to go into ministry, I really ask that you pray through these seven ways of preparing yourself emotionally and spiritually and all the ways possible so that you can go out there and be your best selves and really, really honor God in, in working for him. And that's all I have for you for this week. I am Tamara B. Lawrence. And as always, you'll see me here each week. I'm hoping to every Sunday 
have a video out for you as we work through these three important aspects of our lives, our marriage, um, our ministry, and the areas that we want to work in for God, and motherhood that I've not even really touched on yet. <laughs> um, but that's it for me. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you again next week. Remember to comment below so that we can have a conversation. God bless. Bye.